Do you love me? In our last story, Jesus revealed himself on the road to Emmaus. He spoke of the entire word of God and how every story and prophecy pointed forward to his death, burial, and resurrection. Now Jesus restores the faith of Thomas and the failures of Peter. As these two men come in contact with the risen Lord, their lives are renewed and filled with purpose, inspired by the Gospels. Welcome to another episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham. In yesterday's episode, we heard how Jesus appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. While the men did not initially recognize him, Jesus explained how God's Word pointed to the coming of the Savior, Jesus himself, and even spoke of his death and resurrection. Jesus showed them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Finally, these two men's eyes were opened to see Jesus as their Savior, and they quickly ran to tell others the good news that Christ is alive. Today, we'll hear how Jesus restores a disciple who's holding on to the guilt and weight of failure and another who is filled with doubt. So let's listen with joy to the stories of the resurrection in God's Word. We have seen him, Andrew yelled. We saw him with our own eyes. Thomas shook his head, unable to believe that Jesus had risen from the dead. Since he and Peter were away when Jesus revealed himself in the home of the disciples, he was skeptical and unable to accept the truth. Unless I see him with my own eyes, I refuse to believe you. Thomas's doubt revealed a deep hurt within him. He had ran when Jesus was taken by the temple guards. He was ashamed and broken. Unless I put my fingers through the holes in his wounded hands, I cannot accept that it is Jesus. Eight days had passed, and Jesus was about his own business revealing himself to people all over the land. Thomas remained unwavering in his skepticism. That was until the disciples were back in their homes with the doors locked. Peace be with you, Jesus said. As he had before, Jesus entered the room without a door. He sat in the corner of the room, smiling at his friends. The disciples erupted in cheers, surrounding Jesus to hug him. Thomas was frozen in his seat. He looked at Jesus with tears rolling down his eyes. Hello, Thomas, Jesus said with a grin. The Lord stood up and walked over to him. Go ahead, he said. Feel my hands. See how they were pierced. Thomas ran his fingers across the Lord's scarred hands. His lower lip quivered, and more tears streamed down his cheek. Thomas looked up into Jesus' eyes. My Lord, he wept. My God, he cried. Thomas embraced Jesus like a wounded child into his father's arms. Jesus held him, allowing his comfort to wash over him. Blessed are you, Thomas, for you have seen and believed, Jesus said. But even more blessed are those who have not seen, yet still believe. After this, Jesus vanished again. Thomas wiped his eyes and was renewed with purpose and vision once again. Peter sat by the shore by the seas of Tiberias. He still had yet to see the Lord. The others had told him, but he had yet to look him in the eye. Is he ashamed of me? Peter thought to himself, Is it because I denied him? Peter looked over at the other disciples who were lingering near the docks. Peter stood to his feet and said, I'm going fishing. Some of the others decided to join him. Thomas, Nathaniel, James, and John boarded the boat with him. Night had fallen over the sea as Peter and the disciples lay in the boat with their nets cast out. Peter felt the ocean breeze caress his face. Usually the sea brought him peace, but nothing could quiet his guilty soul. He was filled with regret and could not forgive himself for abandoning Jesus in his final hours. All night they waited for a catch, but the nets remained loose, as did Peter's wandering mind. The dawn broke and the sun bounced off the calm waters a couple hundred yards offshore. Peter awoke to see the sun rising in the east, an entire night with no fish. It vexed Peter to catch nothing. To him, it was just another failure to add to the list. As Peter and the others began to bring in the nets, a voice cried out from shore, "'Cast your nets on the right side of the boat!' the voice suggested. So they cast it, and immediately the net was filled to the brim with fish. The disciples laughed, and John looked onto shore. It's him, he shouted. It is the Lord. 
Peter rushed to the front of the boat to see Jesus walking on the shore beside him. He wasted no time and threw off his outer clothes and jumped into the water. Peter swam as fast as he could to see Jesus. He ripped at the water until his feet finally hit the sand. Dripping wet, Peter saw Jesus tending to a charcoal fire, cooking some fish. Shivering, Peter warmed himself by the fire, looking at Jesus. The coals were the same as when Peter denied Jesus by the fire in Jerusalem. The smell of the burning charcoal brought back memories of his failure. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Jesus asked. Peter rose his head and looked deeply into Jesus' eyes. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, Peter answered. Then feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? This time Peter paused and considered the question, yet his answer was the same. Yes, you know that I love you. Then tend to my sheep, Jesus said. The fire cracked and the coals burned brightly. Jesus asked the same question, saying, Simon, do you love me? Peter's heart broke as Jesus asked a third time. Memories of denying Jesus three times flooded his mind. Peter, a tough man forged by the sea, wept before Jesus. His eyes streamed with tears and he covered his face with his hands. Yes, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you, Peter answered. Jesus stood up from across the fire and sat next to Peter. He put his arm around him and said, Then feed my sheep. When we were young, you did as you pleased. But now that you have matured, your actions are no longer your own. You will be taken places you do not wish to go. This is your calling. Peter was restored by Jesus that morning by the fire. All his past burdens were wiped away by the forgiveness of Jesus. All that remained was the future ahead. Peter would soon rise up to lead thousands to the feet of Jesus. The same voice that denied Jesus three times would declare his truths for all to hear. This was the will of God, to use broken people to achieve mighty things. We open today's scripture with news spreading of the resurrection of Jesus. The disciples and others who followed Christ are filled with a new sense of hope and joy. But some were not so quick to believe. Thomas, one of the twelve disciples, remained skeptical, doubtful. He had seen Jesus beaten, mocked, whipped, and raised up on a cross. He knew that the Roman soldier had pierced his side and there was blood and water pouring out, proving that he was indeed dead. How could it be that Jesus was back? He wasn't there when Jesus appeared to the others on the day of his resurrection. You might say he missed that first Sunday. He missed church, and he missed the resurrection. He simply would not believe, not unless he saw Jesus with his own eyes and touched the nail prints in his hands and feet and the scar in his side. Then one day, eight days after he had appeared to the others, Jesus was right there with them again, and there was Thomas. And rather than shame Thomas and turn him away because of his doubt, Jesus called him over, allowing him to touch the scars and feel his body. You see, God is not afraid of or offended by our doubts. We can still have faith and yet wrestle with doubt and fears and questions. What matters is, are we sincere doubters or are we dishonest doubters? Do we really want to know the truth? Do we trust our doubts to God and let him speak to us and show us what we need to know? Or do we run away and reject him and go our own way simply because we have questions? Thomas doubted, and yet he showed up, and Jesus met his need and restored his faith, and he will do the same for you when you come to him in humility and faith. There was another who needed restoration, Simon Peter, who had pledged undying fidelity to Jesus, but had denied him three times when Jesus was on trial. Peter was a coward, and therefore he was surely plagued with feelings of failure and doubt. Could Jesus ever use him? Even though Christ was alive, would it ever be the same? After all that he had done in denying the Lord, could Peter recover? Because he thought that Jesus would never forgive him, he went back to his old boat and old nets and his old life. But as we hear in this reading, that's not where Jesus wanted him. Peter still had a place in God's plan. Jesus had prayed for him that his faith would not fail, 
but his faith needed to be restored. He needed to be restored. Peter and his companions, other disciples as well, had been fishing all night with nothing to show for it, much like they had done years before. After hours of frustration, they hear a voice calling them, telling them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat. When they did, they pulled up a bounty of fish, just as it had happened before when Jesus first called them to be disciples. John immediately knew who the voice was. It was Jesus. Peter rushed out of the boat, swam to the shore to see his master. Jesus then asked Peter if he loved him. And Peter said, of course, you know I do. Jesus answered, then feed my sheep. He then asked him a second time, do you love me? And Peter responded, yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus once again said, then feed my sheep. Then in John 21, verse 17, we read this. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Three times Peter in cowardice had denied Jesus, but now Jesus was restoring his man, his disciples, and gave him three opportunities to confess his love and devotion to the Savior. Jesus then told Peter that he would soon go to places he did not choose to go. It was a prediction of the trials that Peter would soon face because of his calling and the purpose for which God would use him, a purpose that would ultimately bring glory to God and draw countless others to confess their faith in Jesus. Finally, Jesus simply said, follow me. It was an invitation to walk away from the past and the failures and the denials and begin a brand new relationship with the Lord. It's never too late for a new beginning in Christ. Peter had felt his sin and his shame, but now he finds forgiveness with the Lord. And he begins again to walk with Jesus and became the great apostle filled with the Spirit who preached the gospel to the whole world. It was an extraordinary calling to an ordinary man who followed a supernatural Savior, the risen Christ. It's a powerful word that we can either let our failures define us and destroy us, or we can allow Jesus, our Savior, to redeem, restore us, and refresh us. Jesus stands willing to forgive you that you can find his love and experience his grace in your life. Dear God, how we thank you for today's reading and the example of Peter's life. And though we fail you time and time again, even to the point of denying you, that we can experience renewal and faith in ways that we could not ever have imagined. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, for your healing and your hope. And that when we fail and fall, you lift us up and give us the strength to begin again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. You can download the Pray.com app and make Bible study and prayer the priority of your life. And if you appreciate this podcast, please share it with someone else. I also want to encourage you to go to jackgraham.org. That's jackgraham.org, for we have resources that are free and available for you so that you may know Christ and grow in Him.